So we just added a really cool feature to Project Planner AI, and that is email reminders. So basically, if you haven't touched a project in a while, you'll get an email that says this. We've noticed you have not worked on Icon Generator AI in seven days. We encourage you to continue working on your project. Even 30 minutes a day can make a big difference. So implementing this feature was actually a lot easier than it could have been because we are using Convex for our backend, which by the way is the sponsor of this video you're watching. But I will say that everything in Project Planner AI, we are using Convex to handle the backend requests, handle the file storage, handle the open AI asynchronous processing. It's just a really great experience. But let's walk you through how using Convex actually made this new feature of reminder emails that much more simple. So I do plan to walk you through the code of how I did this with Project Planner AI, which I don't think I really shared much on this channel, um, anything about Project Planner AI. So that would be a nice little treat for anyone who's interested in seeing some real code in a, a live system that people are using. But how do email reminders work in our system? And I figure I will just draw a little diagram to make this a little bit simpler. In case you're not using Convex, you can still implement this following a higher level diagram. So we have our data here. I'll just go ahead and say database. And in our system, a user creates a plan, and every time that they go to their plan page, every time this particular URL loads, we send off an event, and then we update our database to say, hey, this plan was last viewed two days ago, right? So I'll say user, and then they will go to our application. I'll just say convex mutation. So I'll say when user looks at project, go ahead and make that a little bit larger. We basically run a mutation, which updates updates plan viewed at and I actually think I call it last activity so let's just go ahead and call it that so we can all be on the same page so again maybe you have multiple plans like in my case I have over six and some of these I haven't touched in a while like icon generator I haven't touched in a very long time and so what we do is we store a date timestamp if you look at my convex schema we have a last activity and we store an epoch timestamp there so this is just the first piece of how to implement this functionality. The second thing that you need to end up doing is setting up a cron job where you have another system or a script or something that runs periodically. In my case, I have a cron that runs every morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. And by the way, cron jobs are actually built directly in the convex, which I'll talk about, which makes it very, very convenient to just use convex for this type of functionality. But the way this function works is every morning at 9 a.m. it does a query and this says give me all projects last modified less than seven days and so when this thing kicks off in the morning it's going to go ahead and query all those using a convex query it then loops over all of them and for everyone that it finds it's going to basically send out an email i'm using resend for my emailing service but you can use whatever you want aws ses but basically it checks hey send email to user now we are using React to generate this, this template to make it look nice. So I'll kind of talk about that when I get to the code aspect, but this is going to be um, resend is what we're using to send out the emails. Now you might look at this and be like, okay, well, that's, that's pretty simple, right? Well, there's actually a lot more to it because typically when you're dealing with third-party services such as resend, there's something called rate limiting. So you can't just mass send off a hundred emails and not actually give resend some time because you just get a bunch of rate limiting exceptions. Now there are workarounds to achieve this. You could basically add some exponential back off retries so that if you get a rate limit exception, just go ahead and wait like two seconds and try again. Now, if you've been coding for a while, there's also another approach you can use called a queue. So basically instead of just telling Resend to send off the API events, you're gonna publish stuff to a queue. And then that queue is gonna get processed by some other worker that you're gonna have to set up and manage. And then finally that worker is gonna send off Recent. So this is something that I have done in the industry a lot. Um, I do a lot of AWS stuff at work where basically we have SQS queues, we publish events to it, we have a worker that consumes from it with some type of like concurrency limit set up. But again, this is all just a bunch of extra work. Now, something that Convex gives you out of the box is they have something called a scheduler. So let's just add a little box here. This will be our abstraction. I'll say scheduler. So the way I do this in Convex is I say, hey, when this cron job runs, go ahead and schedule these emails to be sent out at different intervals. So the rate limiting for resend, I believe is like 10 emails a second. And so what I do is I go ahead and say, send an email at zero milliseconds, and then also send an email at 200 milliseconds, 400 milliseconds, 600 milliseconds, 800 milliseconds, and then also at a thousand milliseconds. And then if I have a hundred emails I need to send off, I basically just keep pushing these into the scheduler 
And I know that this is never going to hit a rate limiting because Convex's scheduler behind the scenes is going to handle that. Overall, I would say that the Convex cron jobs and the Convex scheduler make this whole process so much easier to implement. So now that I've given you an overview of how this all works, let's just kind of look at the code for anyone interested in how this kind of works. So again, we have our plans here. This is a table in our uh, database and we have a last activity timestamp. So again, every time you log into the UI and look at a plan, we just update with the latest timestamp. But the cool thing is we have a cron.ts file. So inside of your convex directory, if you add a cron.ts, you have this built-in functionality where you can just define cron jobs like this. And in my case, I'm saying I need you to create a cron that runs daily at our UTC 13, which I believe is 9 a.m. Eastern. And then I need you to run this mutation or this action. Okay, so just adding this code, you automatically get a cron. You can keep on adding as many as you want. You can say like crons.hourly. You can say crons.monthly, weekly. You can do just a, a basic cron like this if you wanted to have more control exactly over how this stuff works. But for my example, I'm just going to do something daily every morning. And again, that's going to kick off and run this internal mutation. So one thing that's pretty cool about Convex is if I go into my Convex dashboard, this is where you can kind of manage all your Convex functions and kind of inspect your data as it's coming in and being created. If I go to schedules over here, I can actually view all the cron jobs that have been created in my system. So as you modify your cron jobs and save the files, those will automatically bundle and get shipped to the Convex platform and you can kind of see them in here. And if you want to manually run these, you can just go ahead and click on this arrow. And then I can see that there is a cron scheduled for 9 a.m. You can kind of verify that you have the cron job set up correctly. And the cool thing is you can come here and I can actually run this manually. So if you don't want to wait a full day to test out a cron job, you just come in here. You can add some arguments to your function and you can go ahead and run it. And then you get a nice success message when this is all working correctly. And you can also get back a response or a console logs if you want to see those. Very, very useful dashboard. I find myself using the Convex dashboard all the time when I'm doing development with a Convex backend. So before I talk about this code, I do want to mention there's three different ways you can define functions that run on your Convex backend. There's mutations, where basically you have a function that needs to modify data in your database. You have queries, which is a function that needs to grab data from your database. And then there's actions, which typically you want to use for any code that needs to deal with a third-party API service. So now there's this aspect of Convex. There's public mutations, which are functions that your UI can call. And there's also private internal mutations, which only Convex itself can invoke, right? So you can have a public mutation invoke a private mutation if you want to. So again, we have a cron that's invoking a internal private mutation. So how this code works is we basically do a query against the Convex database and we say give us every single plan which is older than seven days. And this is how you construct a query with Convex. You say query the table plans. One thing I love about Convex is everything is type safe. So all of those tables we have defined in our schema will pop up automatically over here. So again, we can just go ahead and say give me plans. And then I want to check an index, which Convex has the ability to define custom indexes over your properties. I went ahead and added an index over last modified, or sorry, last activity here. And that gives me the ability to query all the data based on that index value. And then I'm saying, give me everything that's within the time range of greater than zero, but less than my current date minus seven days. So then over here, I do a promise all await. And I basically just filter out all the plans where people have this feature enabled. One thing I didn't mention is if you go to your plan over here and go to your project settings, you can go to notifications and you can actually turn this email reminder system off. Some people will probably get really annoyed that they're getting a bunch of emails. So once you've turned it off, it's going to set this Boolean of reminders enabled to false, which is defined over here again in this plans table in my convex schema. So I only want the things that are enabled and then finally, I will send out some emails. But I do want to point out that in terms of the scheduler, remember that whole diagram I talked about over here, where I'm doing 0, 200, 400, etc. That is where this comes into play. So as I'm looping over all the plans, I keep track of what index I'm on. And I basically take that index and I times it by 200. So that's going to basically space out all of these email sending methods. Because in here, what I do is when this method runs, I go ahead and look up some information about the user we're about to send the email to so we can get their email address. And then I basically say, use the convex scheduler and I want you to run after 200 milliseconds or 400 milliseconds. I need you to run another 
action over here. And then we're gonna go ahead and pass this data. So we're passing the plan ID, the email, and the project name. And then finally at the bottom, we just reset last activity back to undefined so that we don't continuously send them emails every morning because that'd be very annoying. So I am gonna dive into this code because this is another convex action. So let's go to send email reminder. This is an internal action like I mentioned before, it can only be called by other convex actions or mutations. And what this is doing is it's taking that information that we defined such as email, project name, and we are using resend to just send off an email that has a from, a to, a subject, and then some React template, which kind of builds up the template that you saw in this email that we sent out. Now I'll show you a little bit how this template works in resend. I really like resend because it's like baked directly into React, but you can just pass it a React JSX template. In our case, we're sending a, re a reminder email template. And this is where we define what the email kind of looks like. I'm just styling it with Tailwind CSS. I have some interpolation going on for loading the image URLs. Also, I got some buttons down here. So when they click the buttons, it's gonna take them to their projects dashboard page, or it's gonna take them to the actual notification settings on their project. So that's about it. I know it's a lot of information, especially if you're not familiar with some of the terminology I'm using in terms of convex. But I do wanna say that this makes developing more complex workflows so much easier because convex has that built-in cron job runner that you can define whatever cron jobs you want. They also have this built-in scheduler that kind of can act as a queue behind the scenes where you can just fire things off at a certain delayed interval. And like I said, I've done stuff similar to this with AWS and it's just so much additional complexity you have to spin up behind the scenes just to be able to achieve this type of functionality and rate limiting. I'm gonna wrap up this video, but I will say, be sure to go check out convex.dev and just set up an account and play around. I promise this backend as a service is one of the best I've used. This is the reason why I decided to refactor all of Project Planner AI to use convex. Before we were just using like Next.js server actions, um, talking to like a Postgres database. And at some point I wanted more live updates. I wanted more functionality and I wanted to be able to move faster and write less code. And that's something that Convex provided me. I will say that they have a Discord and they are very, very active on their Discord. So if you want to join their Discord and talk to anyone there, feel free to. And they also have really good documentation that kind of walks you through how you can get this set up with Next.js or any of the other compatible quick start guides that they have. And just so you're not too intimidated, let's just really quick look at the scheduling, which is where we kind of did both the schedule functions, where we did the scheduler and we said run after a certain interval. And then we also did the cron jobs, which they kind of explain how you can set up cron jobs here. And those are automatically ran at whatever intervals you want. And you don't really have to worry about where those things run. They'll just run for you. All right, that's about it. Have a good day. Happy coding. And be sure to go check out Convex.